Welcome to the Be Dadly Podcast, where we discuss all things dadly, from being an entrepreneur while caring for toddlers, to raising screenagers and talking the birds and the bees. We're here to help you traverse the vast and dynamic landscape of fatherhood. Enjoy practical advice, lots of puns, and even a few heart-touching moments. And the dad jokes are pretty good, too. And now your host, Brandon Jones. So, Stephen, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the show. Um, I am really excited to get into your story and your background, and uh, and excited to pull out some wisdom out of there (laughs) and find out uh, just a little bit about your journey and your perspective on the world. What I can tell you, uh, for the listeners who cannot see, um, Stephen is this radiant, beautiful soul. He has, he's smiling constantly. He's, he looks at you. There's so much joy in his eyes. You can't help but smile back. And I, and I met him out on the patio, and it's just like the sun is behind him. It's like glistening off his hair, and he's like smiling at me, this radiant energy. It's like, wow, am I in the presence of an angel? Like, this is really a really sweet soul. So thank you so much for being here, brother. Oh, just Wow, thank you. Thank you. I'm Will you tell us a little bit about who you are? Give us this sh- brief history. Who are you? And tell us your background. Brief history. I Where are you from? I am a, I'm a dad now. I'm a <laughs> two and a half year old dad that came into my life and changed the course of history or what I thought I was doing. I'm from Austin, Texas. Okay. I'm, I'm from here, but um spent the last almost 20 years based out of Los Angeles and met a beautiful, lovely lady about three or so years ago. And six months later, we have a baby. We uh, are not we don't have a baby. We we were pregnant. <laughs> right. And um now we have this beautiful beautiful child and just uh yeah. Um brief history. Like I said, I'm I'm from Austin. I feel like I'm one of the more probably the most fortunate guy ever. My um, I hear all these different stories in different men's groups that I'm in um about uh my brothers that were not so fortunate and with their father figures and uh, my heart just goes out to them Mm. Um, my history is uh, just uh, my dad was the head Olympic coach for the US Olympic track and field team Wow! and yeah and then in 1988 which was the largest the most country attended Olympics ever um, because the 84 games were boycotted and the 80 games were boycotted by different uh, countries. And so 88 was the first big Olympics in, <laughs> in three Olympics. Wow. And so I was so, so blessed, so fortunate growing up, traveling the world with the world's greatest athletes, the world's greatest track and field athletes, which I believe is the true Olympic sport, and it's the it's a, right. it's an ultimate, you know, it's the it's the man, it's the human, you know, and so yeah, running around the world, growing up with Olympians, and uh, this father figure who was a father to all these other athletes, that uh, somewhat even you know, growing up before the NCAA rules got a hold of us, of uh, of, of of my of whatever. Um, coaches would have athletes stay in our home so i grew up with Mm. with uh, athletes and olympians uh, staying in our home and so just really fortunate traveling the world going to olympic and world uh, athletic uh, events and yeah and just seeing these humans live and just my god just you know inspiring me Mm -hmm. to um to be the best i can be and so coming coming um you know, growing up with uh, an amazing sporting family, I was very fortunate. And then at 14, before the internet, I I realized that I uh, needed a, a little uh, discipline, actually, mm-hmm. and sports um, was really calling me. So I, uh, before the internet, I, I went and um, got brochures and went to the library and uh, researched uh, boarding schools and military academies mm-hmm. to. Uh, to attend, um, uh, I was running with a crew that 
some of them aren't with us anymore. And, um, and, um, some, some, um, interesting characters. And, uh, and went to my mom and dad one night when I was 14 years old and had a brochure of a, a military academy, one of the oldest ones in North America, and told them I found this, this, uh, academy and would like to go. And they were taken back, and we talked about it. And my dad and I went to visit it, and it had, uh, still to this day, has one of the uh, number one uh, sports programs in the country. And uh, and it was amazing. Still, my best friends to this day. I went to went to military school, mm-hmm. and thought sports was going to be my life as an athlete. And uh, this summer, going into my senior year at military academy, I. Uh, was in a car accident and uh, long story short whatever i was paralyzed from the waist down was comed out for a long time and then my uh, my dreams are like man i'm going pro i'm like playing ball i'm quarterback i'm track i'm you know i'm doing wow. that so blink of an eye that uh you know, rods in the back and fortunately i'm you know walking in here yeah and um uh, yeah, so. and you got around our obstacle course that we have set up here. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we have a lot of Gundy. equipment right now that's kind of staggered mm-hmm. everywhere. So <laughs> it's fun. Studio life, studio yeah. life. Yeah, studio um, life. Yeah. So from the, from that point, I uh, started getting into theater and film production myself, and uh, pursued a career in uh, media and entertainment and, uh, completed a complete filmmaking program out at, um, in California and, and, uh, spent about 20 years out in Los Angeles, uh, working in the industry and, um, studied entertainment law and have a legal background and got into just doing deals. And, mm-hmm. uh, so putting together, uh, media deals and producing and events and festivals and just sharing amazing cool content and events and um had always been into like i mentioned health and wellness and partnered up with some epic leaders in a longevity and and so my history is just led me to this point now where i am a uh, health and wellness and media uh, executive um i am very uh, very excited about uh, a supplement company that myself and some friends have have uh, launched and uh, it's taking off and uh, producing content and events and producing <laughs> you know helping produce this little baby this little uh, two and a half year old with my this is not a plug one. but what is the supplement i really am interested like what's what what supplement yeah great it's it's called high vibe yeah high vibe mushrooms yeah and they're not psychotropic right right and right it's a proprietary adaptogens adaptogens yeah the 10 super mushrooms yeah. and it's a, a, a 10 blend uh, mushrooms mm-hmm. certified organic non-gmo every certification they're yeah. grown in a government inspected safe room they're taken from the same tissues every time working with a top top mycologist um they're grown on organic oat strands and uh, we use the mycelium, which is the intelligence of the of the earth, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, we're it's just like getting the largest these, uh, communicating. Absolutely, it's just organ. unbelievable what yeah. the mycelium, our RNA and DNA, is forty percent and sixty percent similar to that of a mushroom. And plants, guess how much of the percent? How much? Five uh, percent. No way. Yeah. So we are a network, <laughs> a mycelium nerve network. Wow. In our body. Yeah. So that is like my brain it, just went. Poof. And that's that your brain amazing. is this network of what you know electrical. <laughs> so I'm on, going on. I'm on those mushrooms. Not I don't know if I'm on your mushrooms, but I'm on uh, the Limitless. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are five. It's called Limitless. Oh, ours is called High Five Mushrooms. Limitless since then is ten. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Let me get my package. Well, is it purple? Hold on a second. <laughs> if, this, if you have ours, because we're we're only in one store. I have to get. I, have I brought a bag too to that show. Be- no way. This is not it. Is oh my gosh. Where did you get that? Are you that? kidding? Are you where did you get right that? Now? This where, is did like you, where did you get the that? The craziest serendipity. I got this at Costa de Luz. I got at, this. At, at Third Eye Tonic. At Third there. Eye Tonic. 
I literally this, this we is, can't plan this. This, this is, is a, the, we're using this. This we, is the look, craziest look, cannot, cannot, So this really is your mushroom, dude. Stuff? This is what I've been using. I'm I like love freaking, this no, stuff. I get my love where's it. my phone? I got to take it. This is unbelievable. I <laughs> yes, this is the you, only. That's the first and only <laughs> store because we've been doing this online. I'm freaking out. I'm this happened to me you're last week at an event that I'm I'm totally freaking out. I, I, I got to get a picture of this <laughs> right now. I love it. I take it every single day now. Unbelievable. Every morning when I wake up, I mix it with a large glass of co- uh, a large glass of water. Mm-hmm. And I do my butter coffee um, with my MCTs and all that. But this stuff has made a huge difference. What did you just say? <laughs> I have been taking this every day for two weeks. The serendipity. I bought this, and you were sitting there telling me, "Oh yeah, I have this company called Limitless." Literally, this is Un- it, dude. Unbelievable! I'm doing a podcast here. The name of your podcast, <laughs> Dadly. This Dadly. Is the Dadly. The, we're, we're 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 going. We're on the Dadly podcast. We got the production <laughs> over here, and the cameras going on. We were sponsoring a, an activation summit. We were sponsoring different here. events. Last Saturday, we're sponsoring this event. Regenerative community event. I'm all, we're all into that too, and we're, I'm, I'm developing with a group of people regenerative communities. And um, we had our banner up, and this guy's like, going, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm taking your message." I go, "Really? You know, because we're you know we're selling right. online, we're at one store." And he's like, "No, I'm, I'm at an Airbnb, and uh, and uh, I, or I'm, I'm staying with a friend, and they left, and there was this bag of mushrooms, and I love them, and it's these mushrooms." <laughs> and I'm like, it's, I mean, it was crazy. It was amazing. Like, yeah. Wow. So, so you I said the 10 and I was like, well, this one I've taken is 10. You and said I was five. like, thinking, there's just no way. Did yeah. I say five? You said five. Oh I, yeah. I meant, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so, funny. It's the two, 10 super strength. I, so I remember oh even earlier God. I was saying, I was telling, <laughs> so I was telling John, I was like, yeah, it's got these 10 mushrooms in it. They're awesome. You know, it's got all the adaptogens and then some. Yeah. And, um, um, I had, I, we did some earlier. I had I, he put some in his coffee. I feel cleaner. I feel uh, I feel more clarity. Um, I'm a fan of mushrooms, psychedelic. Also on my pizza, all kinds of mushrooms. <laughs> I love mushrooms. There's no question about that. Um, I've had some really deeply spiritual, profound uh, moments on mushrooms. Um, one solo, two solo quest uh, that connected me with God. In a really, really deep way, um, help me get more and more clear on who I am mm-hmm. um, as a being. Um, help me even one time understand that uh, this idea of God and the devil as being like this one separate or these two separate things that are outside of us mm-hmm. that that was an illusion. Mm-hmm. That the, both of those things are in us, mm-hmm. and that they are a part of us, and that they are not separate. Mm-hmm. You know, as we'd like to think of them as. You know, and you know, I know everybody has their own. You know view on life for me uh one of the amazing awareness pieces was that this experience you know the hell that we can live is here the heaven that we can live is here Mm -hmm. they're inside of us they're both they're all Mm -hmm. part of us it's all here it's all one you know and um that happened on mushrooms so i'm a big fan of mushrooms and i'm also i don't take a lot of supplements i really do not take Mm -hmm. a ton of supplements I went to an event, and a buddy of mine says, yeah, I have a, I'm friends with Mike Chang. We're not super close, but we know Mike. I know well, Mike. He's and my partner in that's this. What, that's what happens. So my friend says, yeah, Mike Chang's involved in this and, he, and everything. I said, oh, yeah, I love Mike. And um, So I said, yeah, I'd like to try it out. So I, I bought a pack that day, and I, w- I took it home, and I haven't missed a day since. Thank you. It's been that good. Well, it to, really has to, been that good. And, get, uh, um, I'll send him this It's video funny because I was like, this is not a plug at all. I just want to ask you what's the <laughs> <laughs> this. I'm excited to know. So oh, epic. Yeah. That was really super cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'll just jump in. One of the things geez. you said to kind of maybe get back or whatever yeah. is about what you're saying about that choice between this good and evil or whatever, yeah. which reminded me what flashed in my head was when I was at a military school and it was tough. I mean, there was totally. some tough guys there. It was, it was some gnarly stuff. And uh, you know, we'd have, again, this was before the internet and writing letters. You know, my father would write me letters, and and uh, that reminded me of something he'd say regarding you know you can turn you know heaven into hell or hell into heaven. It's, right. it's your choice. That's right. And that's something really stuck with me. Then you mentioned that. There, yeah, so. and I really had that uh, experience. Actually, you know, I, I feel almost wrong to dabble in it and not tell the the full 
<laughs> thing. This is pretty open. This is me being pretty vulnerable here because I don't know that all the listeners are going to uh, be so welcome to this. But you know what? Hey, this is this is one of my experiences, and for me, it was a benefit. It's benefited me um, in my in my life, and it was this. Um, one, I went out to just have a good time. I was just looking to probably go drink and maybe, you know, if with any luck, meet a girl, right? And um, But that particular day, I ran into an old friend downtown, and it seemed serendipitous. I could feel the energy that there was some serendipity here. I hadn't seen him in a long time. And he randomly asked me, hey, man, do you want some mushrooms? And I'm like, I don't have anything better to do. Why not? So I got some from him, but then he was like, hey, man, I got a dip. <laughs> So then he left me, but he left me with these mushrooms. So now I have this choice. Am I going to take mushrooms downtown and be alone and just go figure that out? And something about it was like, yes, and you need to go get a spot because I wasn't about to drive home on mushrooms. So mm-hmm. I decided to go to this hotel. I, I rent a hotel room. I'm like, I'm going to be downtown for the night. This, I'll get a hotel room. I'll totally be responsible. I'll do the mushrooms, and I'll come back to my hotel room. Um, all sounds good and well. I take the mushrooms at the uh, hotel, and I start hanging out at the hotel for a second and kind of taking my time. And they hit me pretty quick. I mean, I was only there for maybe twenty five or thirty minutes. All of a sudden, it started to hit me, wow. and um, they came on really strong. And initially, like I had at the time, I was pretty young. This is, I think, I was maybe like twenty three or something. And at the time, I smoked cigarettes. Uh, and so I'm, I, I decided to smoke a cigarette in this room to light up the cigarette and I'm smoking and I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm having this extraordinarily oh, no. egotistical moment where I'm like looking at myself and I'm kind of like, I don't know, I'm like caught up in me. And, uh, at the time I wore these earrings, uh, they were kind of like very, I was very like punk rock and I had like a soul patch and a goatee. Um, and I had this like, just kind of like this. I don't know, just this different look. And uh, so I take these mushrooms and I'm, you know, sitting there smoking. I'm blowing O-rings at the, at the mirror. And then suddenly I start to feel this presence take over me. And it feels really kind of like dark. And I call up one of my buddies. I go, hey, are you downtown? He's like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm downtown. Because I knew this guy. He was always downtown. He liked to drink and liked to drug. And he was always partying. And he wasn't really a close friend. But when I would be lonely, I would call him and hang out sometimes. We'd go out and I'd go, you know, it was just kind of a friend. It was an empty relationship. We really didn't even have a relationship outside of clubbing or going downtown. And I call him up. He's like, yeah, I'm downtown. And I said, uh, well, hey, I'm at this hotel. Come by. So he comes over and he comes to the hotel room. And when he arrives, I am completely possessed by this egotistical, demonic me. Where I have like wrapped myself up, I'm blowing O-rings, I'm like sitting in there, and I'm like looking in the mirror, and I've got this very devilish look on me. And I answer the door, and I go, hey. And he's like, hey, bro, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. He's like, bro, your eyes are like completely black. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm on mushrooms. He's like, dude, like they're like, I can't even see the rest of your eye. They're just black. And I was like, yeah, I don't know, you know, because my pupils were mm-hmm. super dilated. And um, so he walks in this room. I had all the lights low. It's just like these uh, lamps on. I'm like blowing these O-rings across the room. And at some point, he's sitting across from me and I said, and I have no idea where this came from, just channeled. said, uh, Mateo, do you know what a pig is? And Mateo's like, what? I said, a pig. And he goes, yeah, I know what a pig is. And I go, <laughs> See, a pig is something that can never be satisfied. I take a big drag on the cigarette. I blow it right at him, and I go, you, my friend, are a pig. My friend's like, what? And they go, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. I suck on the cigarette, and I blow it out again. He's like, what the hell? I said, you you throw drugs down your mouth. You throw alcohol. You're constantly out. You're never going to be happy, dude. He's like, what, what are you even talking about? I was like, <laughs> you living in hell. And he's like, starts crying. He's like, dude, I don't know what you're doing here, but I'm out of here. He's freaked out and he's crying. I've never seen this dude cry. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, 
all of a sudden, I start to feel like all of a sudden I'm like, Whoa! and everything's kind of collapsing on itself. And I'm starting to come back to this reality. And I'm seeing him and he's like, open the door to the hotel. He's about to leave. And he's crying, like big time crying. And I grab him on his shoulder as he t- rotates. And when he turns around, I'm me again. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Mateo, wait. Like, I would never do this to a friend. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry, dude. I, I, I'm sorry. He goes, dude, you need to freaking get yourself right. Like, you're something's wrong with you. And he just walks out. Mm. And suddenly I feel all this sadness. How could I do this to my friend? What's wrong with me? What am I thinking? You know? And I go to the mirror, and I'm crying now because mm. I feel so bad. And I'm, and I'm hoping that he'll forgive me. I'm thinking, well, I hope he forgives me. And I, how could I ever do this to him? And as I look in the mirror, I see my earrings. And I see my soul patch. And I'm crying in the mirror. But I look like the same demonish mm. look. Mm. I still have that devilish look on me mm. while I'm pouring these tears of love and mm. sadness out of my eyes. And as I see my eyes crying, my eye, my my pupils, instead of you know, because now I'm looking in the mirror with all that light, instead of the pupils being super dilated, they come, or you know, they kind of came back in to focus, and suddenly all that light is on my on my face, and I'm seeing myself in pure light, and I take, and this is again not consciously, just started doing this. I take my earrings slowly out of my ears. I start to I, I put the the cigarette was out, you know. So I'm just like I take that out. I start stripping down. I strip all my clothes off. I'm completely naked, and I fall to my knees in this mirror. And I at the time, I, and I was in this prayer pose like this. I am so sorry, God. I am so sorry, and I'm saying like praying like this. And suddenly, I feel Christ energy mm. all around me. This sadness, this these tears that I'm crying for someone else because I love their heart, because I care about them, because I feel their their sorrow is my sorrow. So I'm feeling this this Christ energy, and all of a sudden I see that in the room there was this shelf that had these uh, 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 towels on them, and it was like this gold metal shelf that was holding these white towels, big white towels. And they had this frame on the mirror that was like a perfect like gold leaf frame. But on the left side was the toilet. And there was this busted uh, hair blow dryer that was kind of hanging half off. And you could see where the paint was before and like how it was a different color. And it's kind of mm-hmm. hanging on the edge. And then the, the um, edge of the frame looked like some kid had like scratched it or something. So it mm-hmm. looked messed up on this side. And on this side, it was so perfect. And it was all light. Illumi- you know, it was like illuminated. And on this corner, it was all dark. And there was a shadow. And there was a toilet in the corner. And I was like, holy shit. I am in a yin yang. I am in the center, looking at myself, seeing both the demon in myself and the angel in myself, seeing God and seeing the darkness, Mm -hmm. knowing the truth that it's all true. Mm -hmm. But it's also like like what I said to my friend partially was true. But it was sad. Mm -hmm. It was a sad truth. It was it was too much light on that thing. And it came from a, a dark place, but maybe it also came from a place of like helping him. You know, yeah. it's it was hard. It was like the bad tasting medicine. It tastes awful, but it's also good. Mm. So all of a sudden, I'm like, this is all one. Mm. There's not separation. There's not, God's not outside of me. You know, this devil isn't a separate thing. Like, this is like one thing. Mm. And I was like, just a, it shocked me. It shocked It just, it changed my worldview. You know, suddenly I didn't feel so uh, separate. I always thought of this thing as this being these, mm-hmm. you know, things outside of us, mm-hmm. and, um, and so it was a truly just eye-opening thing. And so at that moment, and I, I had only done mushrooms like I think maybe like two other times before that. So that was so it was so big mm-hmm. that then I was like, "Whoa, everybody's got to do mushrooms alone. <laughs> you got to go just do it alone and see what the universe has in store for you." Like, you know, don't invite a friend over. That might be a little <laughs> too much. Did you call him? Did but, you ever talk to this guy? Oh, again? absolutely. No, of course. course. I called him and I told him about the whole experience. Yeah. And uh, he actually was like, whoa, that's really crazy. You know, and, dude, I didn't know what was going on. And man, that really hit me. And, mm-hmm. you know, he was talking yeah, about like yeah. he had been reflecting on it for like days. Like he was just like, man, it was just like. He's like, oh no, man! Like I know you were right, but oh, dude, why do you have to say that? And uh, mm-hmm. you know, it was just a really—he mm-hmm. didn't hate me. We still mm-hmm. hugged it out at the end, and we we're still friends. But um, 
Yeah, just mushrooms are so powerful, yeah. so powerful, and they really do help bring us back to uh, Earth. And but in mm-hmm. whatever this you know amazing universe is, they really have a lot of wisdom in them. Here, here, absolutely. Yeah. So thanks for letting me run that tangent. Oh no, that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing that. Uh, back to you. You have this little one, Sh- boy, girl, princess, little Aww. Zoe Victoria. Zoe Victoria. Yeah, her little nickname is little nickname, Coco Bunny Bubanita. Coco Bunny, Bunny Bubanita. Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of just morphed. And yeah, grown and grown because. Uh, so I have a Coco. Mine's Cohen. I, we call him Coco. Oh. So I call him, oh, my Coco all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's also yeah. awesome. So, um, okay. So tell How me. How old is Coco? He's five. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a little firecracker. Mm. So yeah, he's an Aries, born on the first day of the Zodiac, mm. 321. Um, he is extremely social. Mm. He's not a- afraid of crowds or anything. Mm. I mean, I gave a wedding speech, uh, and he came up and grabbed the mic from me. <laughs> and that was at like four. Yeah, I did a talk at an event. We had a room full of people. I was teaching a cl- no, I wasn't teaching a class at this point. I was actually just giving a talk on um, on my childhood. It was an interesting vi- event. But anyways, I was giving a talk on my childhood, and uh, he came up. My own child came up, and he said, "Can I say something?" And I was like, "Of course, you can say something." So we, you know, we gave him the opportunity, awesome. and he was just like, "Hi." You know, and he Beautiful. just kind of hung out. Uh, it was adorable, and he, he's so he's really brave and, uh, and everything. But tell me about Coco. What's your Coco? Coco Bunny Bubanita. Coco Bunny, Bunny, Coco Bunny, Bunny for short. Coco B is what, what Coco she says. Coco Bunny Bubanita. Little Coco B. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. What is she like? Just the best ever. Yeah. Just every morning comes in and gets in bed and snuggle and just just magic. It's just pure magic. It's just... Uh, a medicine woman, shamanist type healer, friend out in California, had a baby, and uh, had to experiment with a lot of different ceremonies and a lot of different medicines, and on their on her own healing path, and told me this, and I've just believe it that babies are the best medicine. Mm-hmm. It's just that love, mm-hmm. just something just happened, just your heart, and just you no. Know, you can tell they're so magic. close to source. Oh yeah, Just you know, pure. yeah, they're so pure. Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting, you know. One of the things I talk about with uh, a lot of the dads that I'm talking to, a lot of people I talk to about, you know, being a dad. I talk about the child ego state, and about how we get trapped in our parent and adult ego state. We get, you know, we kind of ride that wave where we're always either being the adult, you know, present, aware, competent. You know, we got this. Um, or we're being the parent, which is like going back to our past, like what our parents said to us. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of being in that mm-hmm. parent state. But that's not what our children want. What our children want more than anything is for us to drop into our child ego state, which we do have access to, which we can be silly and we can be playful. And that's all they ever want. They just want yeah. us to be like big little kids. It's the best. They, they see us alive. They're like, yeah, this yeah. is what I'm wanting. Yeah. You know? And it's funny how if you don't give it to them, man, they will, they'll be defiant. They want, they want mm-hmm. that from you. So, tell me, uh, what's y'all's favorite um, thing to do? Is there a thing that you guys have a particular activity? There's a small pond uh, right near our home, and we with ducks, mm-hmm. and so we walk around the pond and say hi to the ducks, and and there's a couple of boulders, just a couple small boulders. You could probably just sit on them, but mm-hmm. she climbs them, and so we call her the the rock climbing champion of the park and she gets <laughs> to the top of the rock and she's yay that's awesome. so rock climbing a little micro rock, rock climbing is fun and yeah and um i'll be doing yoga and she'll come and crawl on me and she'll go horsey horsey and so i'll take her around like a horsey and what else do we do I'll, we have a, a teepee in her room mm-hmm. and so uh, we'll go in the teepee and read books Mm-hmm. And just, she's not, you know, she's not really talking. She has a couple of words, this or that. But I'll lean into her. We'll be looking at each other. And I'll just like get really close and I'll go, tell me all the secrets that you brought through from the other side. Tell, <laughs> what, what do we do? What what do we do? What is doing? She'll lean in. She'll put her hand on. She'll go, <laughs> 
<laughs> just like, oh my god. Yes. <laughs> I'm getting it, just like leaning in. I'm getting the download, whatever it is. It's like, you're just like, you never know. It's like some inaudible though. That's so, cute. so I got that going for me. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Secrets from Coco Bunny. I just love doing everything with her. I just your mom will have to do something, or she'll have an appointment, and then I'm oh man, I'm like oh no, I got to do this. I'm gonna answer this. I got this call. I got to something needs to has to be done. I got to no. I'm gonna be present here with Coco Bunny, and this is gonna be the best ever. I'm going to be right here. We're going to hang out, do some ohms maybe, and mm-hmm. and uh, just everything with her is just is the best. You know, it's epic. And you never thought you'd be a dad or you thought I, you didn't know that, when? I or? didn't think, you know, I'd, uh, I'd, I was a stepfather 20, 30, a long, long time ago for a very short time. And, yeah. and the, the, the child really wasn't... Um, uh, we didn't spend a lot of time. It was a, it was, it was a short relationship a long time ago, mm-hmm. and um, and then I this, ah, I just I didn't think you know that was my. You ever my know your thing. heart could open up this much? Yeah, it's uh, just unbelievable. That's what is going on. It's just, that's what the magic and that's what the medicine is. Just the love mm-hmm. that just pours out of you. Yeah, and um, there was a. Um, a documentary that we watched while Zoe was, you know, growing inside Mama. We're like, well, what do we do? We got to learn. We got to, you know, <laughs> workshops, you know, totally. books. What do we do? And so we were watching this one particular documentary. And you know, if you knew this or not, but we uh, we'd all known that women's brains change during pregnancy. They turn to this mm-hmm. like mom genius and mom brain, mm-hmm. and their bodies produce different you know mm-hmm. nutrients and mm-hmm. go through this entire you know change. And so, in this documentary, they did a study on they were curious on if men's brains. Yeah, changed. I don't know if you knew this or not. So no, it was but an, an please, amazing, I amazing study. Does. This doc. So there was a, a gay couple, two men mm-hmm. in England that adopted a child. Not any, not their theirs biologically at right. all, and they scanned their brains. Their brains actually changed. Mm-hmm. So. Having taking care of a baby literally changes your brain, mm-hmm. and so I thought that was just mind blowing. So mind expanding. I can uh, you know I can tell you that when well first of all I have this great uh, my friend Sam Elick. Um, I know Sam. You know I oh, love really? Sam. Yeah, yeah he's the, my he's business partner, and good buddy. Yeah, of mine. brain juice. I love and Sam. I knew yeah. before that I knew. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have a company together called Good Society. I would go to their events years oh, really? ago. I think. I, yeah. Good Society. I know. Yeah. Good Society. Then there was also a, uh, some events y'all used to do. Well, we did all kinds of events at Mike's yeah. house. We did contemplate. We did life parties. Life party. That was it. Life yeah. parties are yeah, one of the events yeah. that we used to throw out. We're actually going to bring some of that back. Cool. But uh, like it's been COVID. We'll sponsor. We'll do COVID on. put us down for a bit. But yeah. don't you worry. We'll bring some of that back. Yeah. We're going to have a family reunion soon. Um, but Sam, you know, and his his partner, his fiance Amanda, mm-hmm. uh, she's pregnant. And Sam, I see Sam, I go, Sam, you put on a little <laughs> pregnancy weight, and he's like, dude, you're not lying. He's like, I seriously have been putting on weight. You're like, she's getting a little weight. All of a sudden, I'm like getting a little mm-hmm. bit of weight. I'm like, no, trust me, I totally get it because actually, when when Bethany was pregnant, uh, it was the strangest thing. But whenever um, Cohen started coming through like I mean literally like he was being born um, I started having all these chemical I felt like I was on like mm. drugs I was having this extremely euphoric experience I mean it was like I felt like there was angels all in the room this like this womb like experience because we were in a midwife's house mm. and she had these pink curtains just so happened that the sun was rising so it was casting this pink light all inside of the the room and um and then you know of course we've been up all night so maybe a little delirious you know where we went through the whole night and she couldn't you know it was just kind of like a really big experience for all of us but um Bethany is, you know, pushing and she's pushing. And as he starts coming through, like, I start crying and I start feeling like all of these hormones, like crazy, crazy hormones. And, um, 
it had this extremely euphoric experience and unfortunately for bethany the pain was so great she was like he got the great experience i went through all the pain (laughs) the little guy came out and um anyways we watched the thing later on this documentary and they were talking about how there's this co-shared you know experience and hormones can get past you know they kind of there's like almost this osmosis effect Mm -hmm. where the guys are picking up and start having hormonal changes that are related to the pregnancy as well and I was like, wow, like I totally know. I, like I felt that like viscerally. Like I know I was having some hormone mm-hmm. experiences, and I was feeling like, you know, just so much love and joy and all of that. But it wasn't just, you know, hey, I'm having a, a child. I mean, it was like something outside of me was influencing it mm-hmm. too. So it's really, really, really cool. Um, you know, it's interesting too is caring for another individual back in. Um, like the Greeks had hero, and it has you know the little mark over the e and over the o, I believe hero, but that a hero was someone who had strength for two. Like just to have to be a hero doesn't mean anything other than to have enough strength to carry care for another individual. And the hero's greatest gift, I'm sorry, the hero's greatest strength was love. Mm. I always think of us dads as heroes. Mm. You know, parents in general, mothers too. You know. It's, it's not all the there we're being asked to be a hero in this world. It's just have strength for two. Mm-hmm. Be able to take care of you Beautiful. and care for another. So let me ask you a question. What's been uh what's one of the biggest um you know, lessons that you've learned um as they are our teacher, they are our medicine. What are you learning uh today about uh, maybe yourself and maybe your own experience that is like, you know, this is really important. I really wanna make sure I share this with little Coco Buddy. You know, um. sharing with Coco Bunny. Gosh, she's just so young now. I wouldn't really right. to just. <laughs> what's blurring in my head is like nutrition, <laughs> like what oh, you totally. put, what, what you put in your mouth. The most important things that are ever like what you put in your mouth and what comes out of your mouth. Yeah, and be very, you know, careful. And this is and such a hard thing. Let me tell you. Mm-hmm. Right now, she's three. Oh my gosh. Halloween? Mm. You're trying to tell your little guy, everybody does it. Mm. You know, and you're like, yeah, I know everybody does it. Uh, Krishnamurti said, mm. right? Uh, it is no uh, measure of health to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society. And here we are, and the kids are saying, everybody does it. Mm. I'm like, gosh, these, yeah. it's criminal. It's, I thought about a criminal. picture. It would be a great painting. I'd love for I'd love for an artist. If there's an artist out there, please send me this, or even send me just a print, a picture of children, and they're smiling, and their mouths are open super wide, and there's this this person in like maybe like a like with a top hat and like a suit, you know, kind of thing, and they're pouring this bucket, and it looks like candy pieces, but it says toxin on it, That's and it's just pouring toxin yeah. into their mouths yeah. because we know how toxic sugar is. But our children are literally all – there's so much candy everywhere, everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. there, And it's like it's so normalized. It's hard. It's mm-hmm. really hard. Like I, my five-year-old, it is so hard to explain to him and help him understand. He's like, candy's for kids. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's awful. Mm-hmm. It's five years old. Mm-hmm. He, he, you know, and it's, it's – and, and he has a 16-year-old brother. You know, if he goes to the movie theater – I see when they come out of the movie theater, him and his girlfriend and their friends, they've got these big bags of Sour Patch Kids. Mm. That's like the second bag. They already ate the first bag mm-hmm. in there, and they're trying to, you know, and he knows. He knows that this has impact, but, mm-hmm. and he's even told me recently, oh, I'm trying to keep the sugar down, and I'm like, because he wants to have abs, and I'm like, the only way you will see your abs is if you don't consume all this sugar. Right. Like, that is the thing that's... Like, you're athletic, you do all these things, and he's like, this visceral fat is literally sugar-related. That's the only thing I know that you are overly consuming mm-hmm. that's preventing you from seeing your abs. So now he's like, I'm not ordering sweet tea anymore. I'm not mm-hmm. doing... You know. But um, it's really challenging, man. I Get mean, on the mushrooms. <laughs> yes, the mushrooms. That, that Zoe, would be... Zoe, that's the filter. Like, you know, when kids yeah. just drink or have something and they just want more of it she loves those you just still drink them straight down <laughs> yeah i first i remember the first time i took them i was like a little bit like off put by the flavor mm-hmm. or by, by you know the taste oh not anymore at all it's mm-hmm. my body can tell it's good for me yeah. i don't it doesn't bother mm-hmm. me whatsoever i can really feel how good it is for me um i'm gonna have to have you back on 
to let's do it to yeah, share I just, yeah, with us yeah. how you master the uh you know getting know through master <laughs> getting through <laughs> i'm saying master master <laughs> <laughs> okay, how you how you end just up getting it. through um uh, things like Halloween or how you end up, you know, overcoming the societal, uh, mm. the wave of, you know, mm. a, it's it's really an obstacle. It really, really is because you don't, you know, you, I don't know if it's right if, you know, we want to go trick-or-treating, but what are they not going to get the candy? And yeah, do you want a, them to go trick-or-treating? There, there was a trick that we we had this group that went out in Halloween, you know, it was a couple of weeks ago, and there's a, it's something called a switch. I know, have you heard of this trick? No, it's, this is what uh, I we mean. Went around and we're, we went around and we're getting all the candy. And this one mom said, yeah, well, you have the box of candy, but then you have like a toy or some other oh, something else. Oh, you exchange. Yeah. You, at the, you said, look, we got this. And so then they're, they they forget about that forget. because they have something else. And it's, wow, the bait and switch. Yeah, the switch. Okay. So the old see, now, switch. see how helpful. That's actually <laughs> helpful. <laughs> So just be prepared. Halloween, you're going to get this gift that mm. you are going to say, hey, yes. yeah, this is awesome bag of candy. Check out this. They're yeah. like, whoa, remote control car. And you're like, never mind the candy. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The switch. That's actually really helpful. Mm. It really is. I'm going to do that next year. Mm. Cohen would totally exchange a bag of candy for like a drone or something. He's like, we've got yeah. a drone? <laughs> I don't yeah. need candy. Exactly. So very cool. And these smart sweets, I don't know if you've seen these. They're like low sugar they're called smart sweets or whatever. They, they basically like ditch the candy but keep the – or sorry, it says ditch the sugar, keep the candy. Hmm. And anyways, I've been like – every time he tries to go for something else, I'm like, oh, how about the smart sweets? Like, yeah. okay. He'll, he'll accept that. I'm like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah. We got through that one. But cool, man. This has been a pleasure. Yes. Um, yeah, I feel like I we barely scratched the surface no, yeah, what we just, really could have gotten into. Yeah. But, uh, but still, lots of really good gold here. Cool, cool. Yeah, and like I said, I'd be thrilled to come back, you know. And, yes, and, and I love – we need to have you sponsor it because I, I'm i telling you I'm already promoting the stuff like you couldn't <laughs> believe. I tell, I've told everybody about it, and uh, I continue to give well, people – every time I'm with somebody – We'll have to uh, do a, a liner note or a sign note and get you a, a, a – have you as an ambassador, get you as an affiliate coach or something. Get, 100%, get, get, man. I'm reward you for your oh, – we really you. appreciate really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd love to know. be an affiliate. So – I am curious. Uh, you've got this com- company, High Vibe Mushrooms, um, and it does say limitless. But I'm curious, <laughs> as a father of a, of a three year old now, two and a half. She's two and a half. Yeah, two and a half. Three. Two and a half year old. You got this new company. It sounds like you know. I know what it's like to be in a startup. Uh, how are you balancing that? How are you balancing being a father and gr- growing a startup? <laughs> We've just started with with uh, Mamacita Cubanita, my my beautiful wife, mm. and she was rebranding herself as a uh, she's an amazing personal trainer and has her own brand and fitness and written a book and this smoking amazing fitness model and mm. just gorgeous mm. and she's pregnant <laughs> and so it's like okay pivot here and so. Now she's you know, coming back and uh, just looking fantastic, and starting to see people as well, and you know working on her brand. And she's helping out. She's uh, obviously helping with the company as well. Amazing with the content and spokesperson, and and um, again just gorgeous. And and so she has been really awesome with using the electronic calendar. So book like okay, this is I'm in the gym. You're picking up you know Coco Bunny. We're meeting with marketing and we're calling these people that, you know, just just mm-hmm. scheduling. Mm. Clarity on our scheduling is just just imperative. Other it's just like, mm, wow, okay, oh, watch the baby now. I gotta go to here. Oh okay. This shift gears <laughs> off mushrooms, baby. Yeah, mm-hmm. or whatever. So scheduling and clarity. You know, just clarity just really strengthens or strengthens the relationship. Mm-hmm. And um, okay, this will be. And she's really, really good at okay for the next hour or forty, whatever the time will be. We're going to focus on social media content. What are we doing for this? Or what are we doing with the product? Or what are we going to do for our next event? Okay, we're talking about this. I go, oh, I want to smooch or something. No smooch. <laughs> you know, wow. we're doing this for this amount of time. So she's uh, a manager. As a she's been really helpful with that wow. because, like I said, we have way beyond we, we, a manager. Have, I should yeah, say, actually, yeah, super mom. Wow. Um, so yeah, we because we have the mushroom company, but then we're also 
full-blown developing communities that power themselves with their own clean, green clean energies grow more food than we need uh, have different governance and different setting up uh, different um, systems that uh, enable us to be sovereign wow. and our own school system our our own uh, security systems um, uh, becoming a member of these different communities so we're we are gung-ho on that we're developing one now um do you and, have a location uh, yet? We're doing one right now in Mexico, actually. Oh, okay. And so we have the land, and it's fully permitted, and there's wow. already, you know, we've got the water wells going and uh, and solar situation, and we're using that also as a template to partner with other people that have different uh, land to help out with these um, different communities. So that is, that is really North Star mm-hmm. is providing agriculture you know getting that supply chain down to it's outside or we have agriculture right. technology it's right here so our really own energy sources 100 regenerative communities wow. evolved communities when you're a member of these communities you're making revenue because we make more energy than we use we right. make more food than we use we or most of us are producing content or some type of media like i said i'm a producer and yeah. help people get their content out there and enjoy people sharing their messages which you know with these communities it's literally everything it's they're like their own universes wow and and having these all over as we know what's going on it's it's full attack um, on our freedoms we're very fortunate to be here in austin texas and be here in texas where there's some freedoms and going on you are um and more privileges really privileges and freedoms but we're doing, I'm also an, uh, an advisor for a Freedom Travel Alliance, where we are a, a travel technology where people can travel unencumbered. Mm-hmm. So we broker with uh, charter companies, and um, we can go up to 30 people on uh, on different charters and looking to get our own aircraft as well. And we're doing rescue missions today, every wow. day, getting folks that are, are having their entire lives and legacies and generational businesses snapped away from them. It's like Nazi Germany, putting the atrocities there. It's happening all over the world you know we've got people in australia and canada mm-hmm. ireland um all over that we're doing these um, emergency missions getting people out to help people with their freedom that mm-hmm. are leaving everything their bank accounts are, are closed their families are being uh, persecuted and and worse it's this is not dress rehearsal. We are professionals, and this is the big time, and it's game on. Where can people find you? How can they support this? How can they find uh, limitless mushrooms, these high yeah. vibe mushrooms? But even more, like I mean, what you just talked yeah. about. How can someone support super, that? Yeah, it, super easy. We're with high vibe mushrooms. That's it. We're just keeping it easy. You know, you find us on all social at high vibe. I love to say high five. No, high, high vibe. vibe. Like yeah. the vibration, bring yeah. the vibration up. We're filling so, it. So yeah, high vibe, uh, high vibe mushrooms. You can find us. We're super active on Instagram, and and that's um, how they could also support those intentional communities. And we're being careful with our invitations right. on that and of everything, course. and that's growing. And and we'll be happy to we can have a chat about that. Just these different yeah. home communities, and then with the with the travel situation. With um, we're growing a, uh, it's, um, a it's been like a whisper launch and we've got we're getting close to hundred thousand members now wow. and it's called Freedom Travel Alliance and just Freedom Travel Alliance we've been uh, deplatformed on and PayPal taken away and a lot of Gosh. other I'm just because we're uh, helping people uh, travel unencumbered I have so. a couple people I definitely want to introduce you to uh, after this but Stephen yes. Thank you so Dude, thank much. Thank you. God, I, just, I don't want this to end. We are going to have you back on for sure. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing all your light and your love. Dude, thank you for everything you're doing in the world. That's what we got to do. Just get this. Sorry, we got to get this. Get this out there. Get this out there. Absolutely. You know. We hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you've received some value from it, please share it with other dads and consider leaving us a review on your favorite podcast platform, and we'll see you in the next episode. Looking for support with your fatherhood journey? Go to BeDadly.com and take our Dadly Disposition quiz and learn helpful insights on how you can overcome power struggles with your kids.